Next year marks the 25th anniversary of Sony's acquisition of Sony Pictures and the creation of Sony Pictures Entertainment. The early years of Sony's venture into Hollywood were tumultuous ones, so tumultuous that the company had to take a multi-billion dollar write down. A book was even published to chronicle the excesses of the era. The wounds were so deep that decades later, we sometimes face a reputational hangover. Stereotypes about spending are hard to alter, especially in the myth-making capital of the world. But here is the myth-busting truth. Sony Pictures today is vastly different from the Sony Pictures of the 1990s. We are leaner and more profitable. We make a more diverse slate of films. We have a burgeoning television productions business. We have built an international television networks business primarily in, in emerging markets. And we're successful in two fields that scarcely could have existed in 1989. The creation of cutting edge visual effects and online video content. Some of the roots of our reinvention were planted in the 90s with the creation of Imageworks and the establishment of Sony Entertainment Television in India, for example. But much of our progress can be traced to 21st century investments and reforms. In the 90s, we relied mostly on the Columbia label to produce our films. It is still the workhorse of our motion picture division. But as I mentioned, over the past decade, we've created or rebooted labels, including Sony Pictures Animation, Screen Gems, Worldwide Acquisitions, TriStar, and Sony Pictures Classics. These labels today enable us to diversify our filmmaking, innovating to meet the evolving tastes of audiences and the trajectory of technology. And while each of our labels serves as an independent creative center, they all leverage the same unified distribution and marketing infrastructure to minimize overhead expenses. We also leverage our strong relationships with some of the most talented people in town, from Will Smith and Adam Sandler to David Fincher, Aaron Sorkin, and Catherine Bigelow. This approach yielded franchises like Spider-Man, comedies like Grown Ups, family films like Hotel Transylvania, and critically acclaimed box office favorites like Captain Phillips. The results of our strategy of investment, innovation, and reform in motion pictures are now clear. Sony Pictures led the industry last year with a $4.4 billion in worldwide box office revenue. The path of Sony's television productions business is even more dramatic. After the FinCEN regulations were lifted, the landscape of television production changed dramatically. Sony's domestic television productions business was underperforming, and so back in the early 2000s, the decision was made to basically blow it up, dismantle it. But at the same time, the marketplace for original programming on cable began to expand. So too did the opportunities for growth in Europe, Asia, and Latin America. That allowed us to essentially reinvent our television business and take advantage of these trends in the industry. We leveraged long-standing game and daytime shows like Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, Days of Our Lives, and The Young and the Restless. We acquired international franchise formats who, to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And most notably, we invested in both domestic and international television productions, creating a diverse array of dramas comedies, game, and talk shows. We also repurposed classic comedies, like Married with Children and Everybody Loves Raymond, for other nations, such as Russia and Mexico, using local actors and scripts to bring great stories to new life around the world. And we invested in the creation and acquisition of international media networks, planting the Sony flag in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Over the last five years, Sony Pictures has invested hundreds of millions of dollars to increase our ownership positions in key network assets. For example, we now own 58% of our US cable channel, GSN, gaining management control and consolidating the channel. We have also supported GSN's further investments in their digital games businesses. We increased our ownership of MSM India from 62 to 94%, and we have a near-term path to full ownership. 
And our television networks team has broadened its portfolio by launching or acquiring 34 new businesses over the last five years, including channels, digital services, and sales operations. These bets have more than paid off. Today, Sony has more shows on more broadcast and cable networks in the United States than ever. And we have more networks reaching more people in more countries around the world than ever. As far as we have come, we believe that the future is even brighter because there is a lot of room for expansion, both domestically and internationally. Since our television productions business was basically restarted from scratch earlier this century, our pipeline of television programs for syndication is not yet as, as extensive as some of the other producers. Thus, we anticipate further margin growth in our television productions business as our syndication pipeline reaches scale. But our progress will accelerate with each passing year as that library grows and ages. And as much as our media networks business has expanded already, there is nothing holding us back from building it out even more given the growing global appetite for television content. This is especially true since most of our media networks are in emerging markets where there is potential for significant growth in the years ahead. As our media networks continue to expand and mature, our experience shows we can expect our margins to grow. However, when performing industry comparisons, it is worth noting that our current margins reflect the fact that our channels skew earlier in their life cycles and our internationally oriented businesses, which distinguishes them from mature domestic television channels. The old adage says, the more things change, the more they stay the same. That is simply not true for Sony Pictures. The more things have changed, the more we have changed with them. Yes, we are still in the business of telling the most compelling stories we can, but our approach reflects a very modern view of globalization, technology, and economics. It makes for a dramatic contrast. Here we are on this century-old lot but peek behind the doors and you will find the most cutting edge approach to movie making. This is certainly due in no small part to our ownership by one of the world's most innovative electronics companies. And we have always been involved in adapting to the latest technological innovations to make entertainment that's more exciting, economical, and accessible to world audiences everywhere. Some examples. We helped lead the industry in the adoption of Blu-ray as the next generation disc. We were the forerunners in the move to 3D filmmaking, which despite its ups and downs, continues to show its potential with innovative films like Gravity from one of our competitors. 3D also remains a meaningful driver of profit in the international marketplace. And we are leading the way in the creation of 4K films. We incubated and helped popularize Ultraviolet, which allows consumers to buy, store, and easily access movies in the cloud. We acquired a small user-generated video channel and rebooted it as Crackle, an entertainment network that allows you to watch ad-supported premium content on virtually any device. Today, Crackle has 17 million unique monthly visitors on more than 20 platforms worldwide. Now that I've summarized the evolution of content creation and innovation at Sony Pictures in the 21st century, let me turn to the other side of the coin, financial discipline revenue growth, profitability, margins. In this area too, the Sony Pictures of today is very different from the studio of the past. I mentioned earlier some line item changes we've made to curb our spending. Let me broaden the discussion a little more. In the past several years, we have taken significant steps to reorganize the way we do business in order to boost revenues, cut costs, and increase margins. We've done so in order to take advantage of opportunities like the power of international expansion. And we've done so to defend against harmful challenges to our business, from piracy and the downturn of the DVD market to the global impact of the recession. Our management team will dive deeper into the details, but here's a top line look at some of the changes we've made in the past several years. We've examined every aspect of our filmmaking process, starting with development, where we've cut term deals, which are the contractual relationship with a producer for a concrete period of time, by more than 50% from their peak. 
And we followed this with a revised green light process that is more onerous from end to end. Key stakeholders from across the businesses work with Amy and me to methodically review the line-by-line -line economics of each film. More specifically, we take a hard look at talent costs, which have been reformed in recent years, cutting back on so-called first-dollar gross deals and instead making the talent our partners in success. We scrutinize production budgets to be sure we are keeping shooting days to a minimum, controlling special effects costs, and getting the most out of tax incentives. We give equal scrutiny to detailed marketing budgets, including the impact of seasonality on our re releasing costs. If the release date is creating an unacceptable burden on marketing, we determine a more suitable date for that film. We examine all revenue assumptions that are included for theatrical receipts and ancillary sales to ensure that current market conditions and the competitive landscape are accurately reflected. The times demand that a higher bar be set, and we have done just that. You heard me mention talent, and then as, as an aside, let me clarify a misperception about our strong talent relationships. This is not about giving talent perks or relinquishing financial control of our productions. Rather, it means that Sony fosters an environment where a wide variety of creative, creative visions are respected and realized. We want our partners to bring the studio cutting edge opportunities, but only if they meet our standards for profitability. And that means having some very difficult conversations. Saying no when in the past we might have said yes. Telling an actor we will not make a film in their city of choice when we have an alternative location that offers incremental cost savings. Telling a director that the film is absolutely not going over budget and putting them on the financial hook for any overruns. And telling our own development people no when they're in a bidding war for a project and the price starts to jeopardize an attractive return. These are just some of the examples of how we have tightened controls to ensure that our relationships are working for us. Beyond the movie making process, we have focused on operational efficiencies to reduce costs. We united our domestic and international film marketing and distribution teams to save money and allow for more seamless promotion of films with global appeal. Similarly, we united our domestic and international television divisions to cut costs, increase efficiency, and leverage the global potential of our television programming. We implemented shared services for corporate tasks like finance and IT. We formed joint ventures in key markets for more efficient regional operations in home entertainment and motion picture marketing and distribution, which enables us to cut a territory's overhead by 30 to 50%. In addition, we engaged in several rounds of layoffs studio-wide, totaling more than 800 positions over the past four years. And we continue to find new ways to reduce costs. Even as we meet today, we are in discussions with experts to help us identify more efficient ways to do business in the future. We are proud of our record of financial responsibility, but we are not satisfied with it. Before we go on, let me take a moment to address our box office performance last summer. While our summer included financial successes such as Elysium, Grown Ups 2, and This is the End, we also had some films sh fall short of expectations. So we must continually study and learn from our misses just as we work to leverage and amplify our hits. That brings me to the strategy we will use to make Sony Pictures more successful and more profitable across the board. First, we are accelerating our investments in high growth and high margin businesses with a particular focus on international and domestic television networks. The expansion of pay television services and the growing ranks of the middle class and emerging markets help drive demand for well-programmed media networks. Sony Pictures Television will build on its already strong presence in this area and in television productions as well. We're well positioned to create both the content and the means to deliver it to audiences worldwide. And as we do, our revenues and our margins will expand. Second, all of our businesses are aggressively pursuing growth strategies in the digital space as well as international markets. That means meeting the growing demand for premium content that has been generated by new digital distribution partners and international customers. 
It means continuing to expand and launch new commercial digital models like Ultraviolet, Crackle, and other new streaming and sell-through services. We will continue to develop content with universal appeal while also bolstering our ability to produce local language product and formats in emerging international markets. We are also exploiting the ancillary opportunities that digital brings to our own networks, particularly our GSN channel in the United States. Third, we will maintain an innovative and entrepreneurial culture and make smart strategic investments to secure future growth. That's the spirit that brought us Breaking Bad and Crackle and the rebirth of Screen Gems and Sony Pictures Animation. It's what inspired the launch of the new TriStar and our worldwide acquisitions group. Our management team are proven leaders. We want to give them the latitude to grow the studio while supporting the overarching strategy and discipline of Sony Pictures. Fourth, we emphasize creative excellence, agility, and risk taking. Let me give you just a few recent examples of what that means. We had great success with the first three Spider-Man films, but realized it was time to take a risk and reboot the franchise with new talent, and the bet paid off handsomely. We helped Eon and MGM launch James Bond with a brand new actor to play 007, and brought the world three of the most profitable Bond films ever, including the billion dollar box office hit Skyfall. Fifth, as I mentioned before, we are keeping financial discipline front and center. One more example of where we are headed. In our current cost reduction plan, we have identified some $250 million in overhead and procurement savings that we are implementing over the next two to three years, some of which have already been achieved. And as I mentioned earlier, we are working with a third party to identify additional overhead savings. We will also continue driving down marketing costs over that period. David Hendler will bring you those details later today. Sixth, we continue to manage risk, which is especially important in this line of work. Knowing how to navigate risk is something that has stood all of the studios well over the years. We manage Sony Pictures as a portfolio of businesses, and as we collaborate to leverage the mutual benefit of these businesses, we drive not only their individual success, but also the collective success of Sony Pictures. We also manage risk by continually keeping close watch on our mix of domestic and international businesses, helping to insulate ourselves against trends in any single region. Similarly, our diversified film portfolio balances big budget tentpoles and lower budget genre films. We are also using third party financing for certain films to reduce risks. Taking on the right film financing partners at the right time has the added benefit of smoothing the fluctuations of a hits-driven business. And seventh, we are capturing the opportunities that can only be found in the power of one Sony. Sony Pictures and Music act as partners to create unique projects that leverage both of our capabilities. This includes creating film documentaries of Michael Jackson and One Direction, and hiring Adele to create the award-winning theme song for Skyfall. It includes special bundles of Sony Pictures films for Sony's latest Xperia phone to embrace and enhance the new world of mobile content. With our colleagues from across Sony's businesses, we stay on the leading edge of how content is made, distributed, and ultimately experienced by the consumer. No other studio can do that. By pursuing this strategy in a consistent and thorough way, we expect strong top line growth for Sony Pictures. We are also setting the path to higher operating margins, a metric which we have committed to improve. And we are being more transparent with you than we ever have before, both as a demonstration of our confidence in our approach and as a way of holding ourselves more accountable than ever for the results. Thank you.